here we have the outside of the Aldis Majestic 275. As we move along, we will firstly come to the external satellite point. We then have the flue for the Aldi boiler. We do not need to do anything with this particular flue. There's no covers that need to come off. Just make sure that nothing is obstructing it. Next we have the gas locker. So we have space in this gas locker for two gas bottles. This particular motorhome runs the crash safe regulator. So we have the actual regulator itself here and then we have the crash valve just here. In the event of any, any accident and any gas pipes get severed inside the motorhome, this valve here will recognize a sudden drop in gas pressure and cut the gas off at this point here. These can occasionally from time to time be triggered if you go over a bump quite violently. So if you are not getting any gas into the van, just press the reset button just here. You will need to hold it in for about three, four seconds. At the moment, my demonstrator bottle is just fitted with a standard propane hose. So the hose just comes off the regulator and then screws into the gas bottle and is tied with a gas spanner bottle on and off on the top. Once I've finished this demonstration video I will fit the correct hose that goes with this particular crash valve system. So the hose looks very similar to the one I'm using apart from we have this little green button just here. So once we turn the bottle on we will then need to hold this button down for about three or four seconds to allow the gas into the van. Once we've done this, we can actually leave the bottle on even for travel because again, if this hose gets damaged in any shape or form, this valve here will recognize also the sudden drop in gas pressure and cut the gas off as well. If you turn the gas bottle off, when you turn it back on again, you will need to hold this button back down again. Next we have the fresh water drain tap. So to drain down the fresh tank, just turn. We then have the external shower point. So if we now remove the dust cover and then grab the end and plug it in, as long as the water pump is on inside, this will automatically go under pressure. <clears throat> and then to remove it, just pull on the blue trigger just here and then pop it out and then pop back in the little cover, click it back in. As we move round to the rear, we have the reverse camera just here and then fresh water into the motorhome. As you can see, this can be locked. Push, twist to remove the cap and then pop in your filler hose to fill up the fresh tank. Next we have the cassette. So to remove the toilet cassette, just lift up here and pull towards you. Before use, remove the cap and add your toilet chemical with a small amount of water. These cassettes also empty from this point here as well. Just remember that when pouring away, to hold this button in just here to release the vacuum inside. It's also advisable to keep this seal lubricated Fetford do their own seal lubricant, but any silicon based lubricant is fine. This is also a nice quick and easy way of giving the cassette a clean. 
if you do need to gain access fully inside you can twist this whole section round so we just need this little triangle here to go to this point here all of these are now on wheels with extendable handles the spare wheel is located just here and winds down at this point here in the jack and wheel brace kit there's a bar that bar locates into that point there and then you attach the brace to it and wind it down we then have the grey water drain so anything that goes down your plug holes goes into the holding tank and then is drained off at this point here we then have the vents for the Dometic fridge as this is a fully winterized motorhome it is supplied with winter covers so if you are going to be using the motorhome in, in extremely cold climate these can be popped on the top and bottom vents just pop it on like so then with a flat headed screwdriver or the ignition key just turn both of these points here and here to lock it into place the fridge will then just vent from this lower point just here. This will then hold some heat in, making the fridge run efficiently. If these are left on in the warmer months, obviously the fridge will just overheat and again not work correctly. Next we have main hook up. External barbecue. If you are going to use the barbecue point, you will need to get a barbecue adapter. They are a little brass spear about this long. Attach the hose of the barbecue to one end with a Jubilee clip, and then the other end will then just pop and lock into place here where my finger is. You will then be able to turn the gas on. To remove, just push the collar towards the motorhome and it will then release itself. We then have access from the outside underneath to the bench seat. The Dometic wind out canopy just here. To wind it out just pop the awning wind and handle into this point here and then wind. Diesel fill just here, cap undone on the ignition key add blue top up just here it will let you know when add blue needs topping up on the dashboard tire pressures just here jack and wheel brace all underneath the passenger seat vehicle battery underneath the floor just here and bonnet release just here This motorhome is alarmed and it's all done on the main fob itself just here. So if we now press the lock button, we will get a single chirp letting you know the motorhome is locked and the alarm is armed. And when I unlock it, we will get a double chirp to let you know that the motorhome is unlocked and the alarm is disarmed. What we can also do is put it into pet friendly mode so we can disarm the internal sensors but keep the sensors active on the outside to do this we just need to press the lock button twice and we will get a high pitched chirp letting you know that you've put it into pet friendly mode as soon as we unlock again it will then go back to its normal function <laughs>